Okay, we'll go ahead and jump in here um, and then we'll just keep uh, admitting people as we go. We just want to thank you. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jeremy Churchill. I'm the Outreach Foundation's uh, Director of Communication. Um, we are just so glad that you have joined us today um, for this global mission update. This is something that we hope that we might be able to do um, periodically, just to give you a current view, snapshot, understanding of what's going on in the world. Um, you know, we've got 71 partners. They're spread out across 34 countries. Um, so obviously, we're not going to get to every partner, every country, or even every region or continent. Um, but the idea is, if we do multiple of these throughout the year, that we'll be able to update you on uh, different areas of our partners and different types of ministries uh, as we go uh, into different uh, Zooms throughout the next, you know, upcoming year or so. Um, you know, we communicate in a lot of ways. I just want to acknowledge that we do have our monthly email, which uh, most of you, if not all, should be on. Um, that's a great way to stay connected with us, our website, our social media, um, our blog postings, a great way um, to learn about what's currently going on with our partners, the way in which God's at work in the world. Um, and then we have our printed newsletter as well. The printed newsletter comes out twice a year. We've got another one of those coming up in November. So if you are not on the mailing list for those printed newsletters, please let us know. Um, please email us uh, at info at the outreach foundation.org and uh, someone at the office can get you put on that, um, on the printed mailing list. So uh, today we're gonna hear from our executive director, Mark Mueller. We're gonna hear from associate director for mission, Tom Boone, and we're gonna hear from one of our newest partners, um, Novus Foundation. We are so excited that they have come on board, been in a few Zoom meetings with them. They are just lovely people, um, a great organization. So you're gonna hit, get to hear a little bit about them, um, what God is doing in Poland. Uh, that's where they are in Poland. And so it'll just be a great opportunity to, to see them. Again, everyone's muted, that's intentional. It just helps the flow, it helps things go and move on. Um, there will be times for questions at the end of each of the presenters. So if you want to ask a question, just type in the chat. That's all you have to do. Just type the question in. I'll be moderating that. I'll be looking at it. And then we'll ask those questions for you. It's just easier that way. Um, and so that way people aren't talking over each other. So, um, but when we go full screen, which we will, uh, Carol Dublin, our office administrator is gonna do a PowerPoint presentation, uh, put it up there for us. That'll send us full screen. Hover at the top or the bottom of the screen, and you should be able to find that uh, chat button. It'll pop back up, and you'll be able to type it in there. So we just wanted you to know that that'll be the way that you can get your questions in. Um, we do um, – we, we're just excited at, at the Outreach Foundation. We're in our 45th year, um, celebrating our 45th anniversary of – fueling the global mission of Christ by growing trusted relationships. This is new language for us where our mission statement is concerned. Um, but it, it, it explains who we've been since day one. And I just, uh, I think we're super excited about where God's calling us. We feel a clear sense of call. Um, as we look towards turning 50, uh, a 2030 goal for us is to fuel the next generation of maturing Christian leaders who will keep global mission at the forefront of the local church. We understand that raising up pastors, raising up lay leaders, raising up committee members, elders in the local church is crucial to keeping global mission at the forefront. And, um, and so that's kind of what we as a staff uh, are going to commit to as an organization. In addition to everything that we've been doing, this is just getting added on top. Um, and so we just love what we do. We've got a very committed and passionate staff and obviously, we have a committed and passionate leader that leads that staff in Mark Mueller. So, Mark, I'm going to unmute you. I'm going to hand the mic over to you. Let's see if we can get Mark. Well, I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to uh, <clears throat> join us on this uh, Zoom meeting. We're going to be uh, respectful of your time. But as I look around and I see the names and the faces, there's a lot of my friends uh, that I'd love just to connect with uh, in this in this time, but I recognize that, that this isn't the venue of that. Um, I am obviously privileged to work with an incredible staff, and uh, just letting Jeremy lead off with this gives you an idea of the quality and character of the staff that we've got. Jeremy's just a, a fabulous person, uh, pastor, and um, and we have the privilege of being with him and him with us as our director of communication, and then we have Carol. 
uh, is on this call as well, well Carol Dublin, um, office administrator, doing phenomenal work. I, I mean, I could just go on and on. So I am blessed. I just want to say that briefly. And uh, having Tom Boone as a colleague and, of course, my former exec, uh, Rob Weingartner, on this call. Um, I want to give Rob uh, credit because uh, much of the work that I've been able to do builds on his prior work. And uh, I'm grateful for his leadership and his involvement. He'll be at the 45th speaking in Greensboro, North Carolina next month, and we're looking forward to his message. So thank you, Rob. I'm going to be brief today because I want to get out of the way so that you can hear really some of the incredible stuff that's going on in the world. But it is a privilege to lead this organization. As Jeremy said, 30 some odd countries, we're actually moving into the 40 range with 71 partners. And some of those partners are on this call uh, doing absolutely incredible work. It's just you just pick the area. Uh, we got the Turks. I see the Turks here doing work in Madagascar and absolutely incredible of what uh, they've done over the years. But um, I'm going to just give you um, a, a brief 30,000 foot view of where God seems to be taking us these days. Not only is it with the existing relationships that we've got with our wonderful partners that we've been with for all these years, but on the horizon, you have some incredible work uh, as God seems to be opening up new avenues for us in the Arab Peninsula. Uh, we're ready to hear an announcement by the king uh, in Saudi Arabia that he's going to open up land for uh, and permission for the church to work. So we're waiting for that opportunity. That's going to open up, open up new countries for us to explore. Incredibly excited about our work in China. Uh, I'll be in Chicago next me next week to meet with the Chinese Christian Council, the leaders of the official Chinese church. And then uh, Tom Boone will lead a trip that I'll attend along with our board chair and vice chair uh, to head on over to China as we've been invited. We're in one province of the 33 provinces, I think, 33, 34 provinces, but we've been invited now to be in ministry in all of those provinces. Um, they, China is really uh, enjoying our work with um, the official church, and uh, we couldn't be happier to be engaged in that. But we need your support and your help. Um, that's a big, big country with a lot, a lot of land and, uh, and a, lot of, a lot of things to do. And, and then we could talk about Ukraine. Tom is going to mention that about our work. Tom and I were on the front lines. Uh, we were in Kharkiv, which is, uh, you know, very much been in the news. Uh, in February, we were there. And to see the work of the church in Kharkiv, in Ukraine, amid all of the missile warnings and sirens that go off up to 10, 12 times a day, uh, and to see the church at work there is just phenomenal. Uh, and that's not even to mention, you know, the, all the work in the diaspora, the Iranian diaspora. The church is emerging and growing. Uh, for me, it couldn't be a more exciting time uh, because we get, I, for me, you know, you can get really depressed when you look at the news and hear the hear the reports of everything that's going on, all the doom and gloom, but uh, it's quite the opposite in the world. Uh, God is on the move and it's it's just life-giving. So uh, once again, I thank you for the privilege of, of leading the organization and you being a part of it. I'm out speaking, Tom's out speaking, Jeremy's out speaking, everybody's out speaking um, about the Outreach Foundation. I think in the next uh, 12 weeks, I'm in 10 different churches. And so... Um, that's just that's it's just to, to let the church know and to uh, find ways of engagement uh, into these very trusted relationships and fuel the work of Christ in the world is is really just uh, a privilege and an honor to be a part of. So contact me if you got any questions or concerns or anything that you want uh, us to be engaged in. So I am going to hand it off now to my colleague Tom Boone. Uh, Tom is going to probably I think going to introduce our new. Uh, our newest partner to the Outreach Foundation, and um, and then uh, he'll uh, he'll also speak to our work. So, Tom. Well, hello everybody, Mark. Thanks for the introduction and for just that thirty thousand foot view. It is great to see so many friends on this call, and um, and Jeremy, well done to put this together. Uh, I think given the the breadth of people that we have here, it speaks to the good timing that that you picked. So, well done. As I look to my screen, I am so excited to see a couple, uh, Aneta and Pablo Mon uh, Just, It's great to have you two here. I know you're coming to us from California right now, right? 
Yeah, um, they are on a U.S. visit uh, that we have um, helped to shape, uh, and they'll be spending a lot of time in Texas. They'll be coming to Alabama, and uh, I see Sandy Porter here, Larry and Catherine Michael, who joined me in Poland not too long ago, and they're going to be uh, hosting uh, the, the Montanos here, uh, so it's great to have them do that, and uh, just real excited for you all to hear about this, and, and I think to introduce them, what I would say is that this is a providential partnership. I mean, each partnership is providential, but in a specific way. Uh, we started with them uh, just a couple of years ago through the uh, Ukraine, the war that, that uh, still rages in Ukraine. Uh, they were flooded with refugees in Warsaw, Poland, which is where uh, they are, are living and, and the seminary where they were part of is, is located. Uh, and they just did an outstanding job uh, just responding to that critical need in a moment. Well, you know, one of the things that, that we are very interested in at the Outreach Foundation is not so much, um, and we are there, to, to, we are at the ready for disaster response. Uh, wherever the church is responding to an emergency, we want to be there and, and help fuel that effort. But our long range effort, our in long range interests really are to develop these partnerships that will last for multiple years, develop close relationships. Let's walk together doing kingdom work and see what, what just Jesus is going to do through this. And, and so in his providence, um, Warsaw, Poland, on my last visit, I did not realize this, but there are 160,000 international students in Warsaw, Poland. 160,000, and there are 60 universities servicing those uh, students. So Aneta and Pablo uh, and, and their colleagues, uh, uh, Piotr and Stasia, really have decided that now is the time for the, the community of those students who come from all over the world to have a focused type of theological education that is fully accredited in the EU, uh, but focuses really on two key aspects that are of keen interest to the Outreach Foundation. Number one uh, would be church planting. Uh, there is no other institute just focused on church planning. So you think 160,000 students, and there are some of those who are Christians, and they are going to return back to their homes. That is, they are wanting to plant churches with skills that they have learned uh, in their home countries. It's a fabulous strategic partner for that kind of work. Uh, the second focus, really, which has emerged through the Ukraine war and that they're going to speak to uh, in depth, is just the need for trauma counselors, uh, Christian counselors who understand PTSD, how to provide counseling from a Christian worldview to the needs of, of refugees all over the world. Uh, and they're going to start with Ukrainians, uh, which was really, I think, a just a, a fabulous next step for the Outreach Foundation and our interested donors and congregations as they think, OK, what is that next step for us as we think about the war in Ukraine? How do we continue to respond well? And so we have landed uh, by God's providence again with a trusted partner. They are doing fabulous work. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you to uh, Aneta and Pablo. Montano, and uh, thanks for being here, Aneta and Pablo, and I'm now going to just let you all take the floor. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. Just, just like uh, Mark and you, Tom, before said, we also already see here some faces that we know, which is great to feel a part of the outreach family. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a short presentation that that uh, over the next 12 to 15 minutes we would like to share with you. I don't know whether I am allowed to share it from my laptop or you, Jeremy, will share the presentation for everyone. There we go. Okay, great. Thank you very much for, for sharing the presentation. So uh, as uh, we were introduced, both uh, Pablo, Pablo and I, we live in Poland, and this is where our work is. However, our work, our missionary mission is not only to serve Poland. We feel that we are blessed by God in Poland because we are in the strategically uh, great location to service Central and Eastern Europe. 
uh, all of the countries that are neighboring, neighboring with Poland, such as Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, uh, also Belarus. We also have border with Russia. So all of those countries are our neighbors. Yet we are a peaceful country. We're part of the uh, European Union. We're part of NATO. Therefore, we are enjoying stability in the region and we can service uh, in many ways our partners, our neighbors. As Tom has mentioned, uh, our foundation was started by need, by uh, the fact that God uh, really prompted Ukrainian women and children, mainly as refugees, to enter to Poland, and we were able to provide for them. Mostly, of course, physical needs of, of place to sleep and, and medical care. But we noticed how many of them came traumatized, as Tom said, with PTSD, women and children coming with almost nothing. But the, that was not their concern. The concern was that the children were in fear of going outside. They didn't want to participate in activities. They didn't want to go out to school. So we noticed that there is a great need of providing trauma relief and, and counseling, and of course, Christian counseling. That's how we started. But as our mission grew in that field, we have understood that we are called now as Novus Foundation to equip future Christian leaders, men and women, to advance his kingdom into their communities around the world, of course, focusing on our geographical location by modeling Christian lifestyle through getting involved in church planting, leading missions, becoming professional Christian counselors. That is important for us. Uh, we also made a note for you so uh, so you, you know for sure who we are. We affirm the, the Lausanne Convent Covenant. Uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, Christians. Uh, we believe in a Trinity. Uh, we pray to uh, our uh, God uh, daily, and everything that comes, comes from him. And we serve him, of course. We can go to the next slide, Jeremy, please. I just wanted to for you to see the faces of the four people who are the founders of this foundation, Pablo and myself, uh, Stasia and Piotr Novak. We are all college uh, professors. We are educators. We are passionate about Christ. And we're also professional in our areas, uh, respective areas. Stasha is a therapist. I'm a psychologist and a therapist and a cancer coach. Uh, Pablo is by heart a church planter. And Piotr is uh, also a very experienced Christian educator. Uh, and has a PhD in, in theology, so he is our spiritual uh, father. We can go to the next slide because I do want to show you that our foundation is working on four elements that work in synergy. Higher education, missionary training, church planting, and therapy centers. So mm, call it call to holistic mission. We started, as Tom and I explained, by answering the need, but now we believe that there is one thing that never changes in the world, and that is God. God is unchanging. His word remains the same. And for those who walk with him, his promise is always the same. But we know that everything around us is going to change, and it's changing. So we want to create an opportunity, a place in education to strengthen those Christian leaders through biblically sound education, to be able to advance Christianity, to provide the stability based on his word those in those areas that are in constant turmoil, that are constantly changing, that are being rebuilt. So they will be the rocks of their communities. And to achieve that, we wanted to start and we have already signed a partnership agreement with the Warsaw Baptist Seminary. So the Warsaw Baptist Seminary is going to provide accreditation for our three-year European bachelor's degree in theology and counseling studies, in short, tax. The Novus Foundation is providing the program, the professors, and the know-how for, uh, for these studies. And as we've mentioned before, we want to edu educate Christian leaders who will be missionaries, uh, who, will be, uh, who will be pastors, and who will be Christian counselors. 
So not surprisingly, because of who we are and who we serve, many Ukrainian women are showing interest in our program. They want to know how they can become students, uh, how they can uh, gain knowledge in, in biblical counseling and Christian counseling. So this degree in this first edition is really going to focus on providing education to those who are uh, part of the Ukrainian diaspora, especially women who are already in Poland or in Ukraine and would like to join our program online. There will be two tracks of this program. One is for church leadership and church, uh, church leadership, of course, is mainly targeting uh, future pastors and Christian counseling. This is the program providing counseling tools, understanding how to be professional Christian counseling, how to invite God to be center of every counseling conversation, every counseling meetings. Our studies tax will prepare Christians to be servant leaders with counselors' hearts. But education is one. We also want our students to receive proper spiritual formation. And that spiritual formation will be based on, of course, having time to worship God. Uh, firstly, of course, in small groups and meetings, but secondly, also by having, spe having special dedicated worship time, which will be a 45-minute weekly devotional, which then will transfer and transform into a 90-minute weekly uh, church service, and soon Pablo will tell you more about it. So education that uh, is first part of our of our synergy is working together with providing our students with the missionary training. As, as Peter 1 verse uh, 4 verse 10 said, each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So we believe that Novus Foundation through education will help those students not only discover maybe those gifts, but strengthen the gifts and give them venues, opportunities to use those gifts in various forms. So the missionary training is part of our education. Students will have 120 hours of practical missionary training as part of our curriculum. Uh, this is quite uh, a lot of time that we're giving into missionary trainees. Those uh, uh, students will be able to complete the time serving in churches, uh, serving in different, uh, in different locations, and using those gifts that uh, they have been entrusted by God to be in missions now and in the future. So then... He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Matthew 9, 37, 38. We as the Novus Foundation want to train the harvest workers to become more efficient, to become more personal and more intentional with their work through higher education, missionary training, and church planting, we will be advancing his kingdom. And now I will ask Pablo to tell you more about church planting because this is something which is dear to his heart. Okay, thank you, Aneta. Church planting has always been with me since I was a child, helping my dad as a, working as a pastor in Bolivia, planting churches. That was what I learned from him. And that has been something I've been involved with throughout my life. The plan with Novos. In 2025, we want to start already two CF, which is a Christian fellowship, two CF Spanish, one in Warsaw and one in North Poland. This will be in Spanish. The International Christian Fellowship is the largest international English-speaking church in Warsaw or in Poland, actually, so they have agreed for us to use their premises. In 2026, we want to start with the first Christian fellowship in English. We, this is directly connected with the devotional time that we have with all the students. We are going to open the doors to all the people who want to attend. It's not only 
for our students. So this worship time, this devotional time is going to become the first Christian Fellowship English Church. Just an idea, in the academic year of 2027, 2028, we estimate to have about 90 students from about 20 different countries. So we are going to teach the students how to live stream the service so they learn when they go to their home countries to do the same. Also, we're going to encourage the students to invite their families, their friends, their home churches to join our live stream. Just to put a number, if only three guests per student joined, really we expect to have about 360 attendees every service that we have. God is not calling us to think or to build mega churches. Mega churches need people to come. What we want to do is to take the church to them. We want to turn the church to small towns, small, medium sized cities in Poland and all around the world. Our Lord is going to send us a student from different countries. He will tell us where we should plant the next church. We can go to the next. Thank you. So also we are thinking of the growth, what comes next? So in, in English, the Christian Fellowship in English, we want to plant two more churches by 2030. The expatriate population in Poland is growing steadily in especially the major cities, and there is a huge potential to do this. Also, Ukrainian, it is estimated that over 1 million Ukrainian refugees will stay in Poland. Counting, adding to this, we have the, about 1.5 million Ukrainians that were already in Poland before the war started. So really we have in Poland about 3 million Ukrainians that are staying. So we see the potential to really start a Christian fellowship in Ukrainian. We are going to have these Ukrainian students who are going to lead the planting of this church as well. And of course we are in Poland. Based, based on the studies by the Evangelical Poland, as of 2024, in a country of 40 million people, only 0.3% are evangelical Christians. There are over 700 cities in Poland that doesn't have any Christian, uh, uh, evangelical Christian church. So we must mobilize to plant churches in Poland. The potential is there, the, the market is there. So we have to do that. 27, 28 academic year, we estimate to have about 90 plus students. This number will continue to grow and the number of international students as well. So really we will have an army of students to go plant churches wherever God calls them. As an example, let's say two of our Ukrainian students want to plant a church. So we are going to support these two students to plant a church in Ukraine. We may have students from Kenya, we may have from Latin America, etc. So the plant church really is a pot huge potential. It is possible to do it. And with prayers, we need to listen to what God is telling us to do. And we have to grow. Yeah, so everything we do, we do for the glory of God. We exist for that sole purpose. And all that we do really feeds of one another. The synergy is obvious. We want to educate and equip so the people can go serve and share. Then they can grow in an organized manner in their communities so that in those communities that we can grow potential new students for our program. And then the cycle can continue for the glory of God. Yet there is one more element that you see here on the side, which is called Christian Counseling and Therapy Center. At any and in all stages, therapy and counseling is important. At the education part, at the missionary and the church planting part, uh, church growth part, um, recruitment part, the Christian Therapy Center becomes uh, an important element of our vision. And I want to tell you more about it. We already have one Novus Therapy Center in Warsaw. It started when the Ukrainian women and children came to Warsaw two years ago. And this is the place where one-on-one -on -one meetings and group meetings are, are taking place. 
mainly uh, uh, serving that uh, that community but of course we also have uh, serviced uh, some english speaking uh, uh, people uh, christians in poland who couldn't find christian counselors so through our program through our teaching through our 3 year bachelor's degree theology and counseling studies we will have educated christian counselors those counselors can use Novo Therapy Center as practice grounds. They can be involved with children. They can be involved with the mothers. They can be involved with those who are uh, in trauma, who have lost uh, dear ones. The Later on, the graduating students will be able to help us in organizing resilience retreats for, for maybe teenagers, maybe for children, maybe for families. And also as Novos Therapy Center, we, as, as one additional focus, we are looking at working with the pastors in Poland because there aren't really any places where Polish pastors and Polish church uh, can get um, uh, mental health support, uh, counseling. So we as a therapy center are also building a very much uh, a presence in Poland and being a place where pastors can get rejuvenated, refueled, especially after servicing so many people at need, you can get burned out and, and uh, you may need to, to take care of your own well-being and your own health. Let's go to the next one. Thank you very much. So we believe that our Warsaw Novus Therapy Center can be on the blueprint for mall therapy centers. Right now, we are very much uh, involved in helping the Ukrainian diaspora and the women of Ukraine. We feel that maybe in the in 2025 we will be open to uh, will be able to open first Novus Therapy Center in Ukraine, and maybe in the future in other countries. After all, we have recently found out as we were studying and reading about armed conflicts, there are over 100 active armed conflicts in the world right now. Can you imagine the scope and the scale of trauma and the PTSD and the counselors that will be needed to take care of all of those communities and the needs? We want to be preparing those people who can go back to those communities in Africa, in Ukraine, uh, even in Russia, possibly, to counsel the people, to bring Christ where uh, maybe there was no Christ before, where there was no counseling and there was no healing. So all of those elements working together make a Novus Foundation uh, a holistic mission, focused not solely on one element, but on all of those working together for the glory of God. Just final words about the program. Academic year will begin for us in February 2025. We are praying to receive full scholarships for 20 Ukrainian women living in Poland or outside of Poland who would like to be our students, who we feel will be tasked with rebuilding their country, their faith, their churches, one person at a time. And we want to equip men and prepare them for these jobs. These women will become trained Christian counselors who will help their traumatized nation heal holistically, where Christ will be the center of the healing and all provision. Uh, this information here is about the scholarship, uh, uh, what we are hoping to collect during our trip here in the United States as we're talking with the churches and everyone that we are meeting. Uh, this is all that we really wanted to present to you. I already told you about the 100 armed conflicts around the globe. Uh, we believe that there is so much trauma and so much healing that has to be done uh, in the world. And our program, our education, mission training, church planting is bringing all of that back into the local communities. We will be happy to answer any questions that you may have or any comments uh, that you have, we'll be happy to, to receive from you. Uh, we are here to, to, to maybe give you more information if you need it. Thank, well, thank you. you guys uh, so, so much. I'll um, turn it over to Tom. If anyone has any questions, uh, 
for the fine folks at Novus. Just type that in. We'll get to those uh, at the end. But Tom, go ahead and uh, if you want to kick in, uh, talk about some of your regions and what you're seeing here, uh, we would love to hear from you. Let's get you on. Thanks, Jeremy. Yep. And let's go ahead and proceed through my uh, slides fairly quickly. I'm going to focus on just kind of as a bridge from what uh, uh, we heard from Novus Foundation kind of into Ukraine. Ukraine has obviously uh, been on a big blip on our radar of late. Uh, our lead partner uh, in Ukraine uh, out of this war is the Ukrainian Evangelical Theological Seminary. Uh, you, some of you have met Dr. Ivan Rusin, who's the president of that seminary. This is a picture of, of us taken at our recent visit, uh, which was in April when we went to uh, facilitate a a uh, training seminar uh, conference, actually, a retreat for the uh, chaplains and their spouses. So these are military chaplains. There are 40 of them there. Uh, and, and the seminary is doing a lot of great work uh, just in the front lines of the war through those chaplains. So, Jeremy, let's move on. Uh, Ukraine, obviously, is uh, I chose this slide because you can see how it is. We just heard about Poland. Uh, Ukraine is uh, next is between Russia, Poland, uh, Moldova, Romania, attached to Hungary, Slovakia. That is a lot of uh, borders there. It's on the northern part of the Black Sea, which, of course, is attached to Turkey on the south. Uh, you have Iran over there, too. So, you know, it's, there's a lot it, it, there's a lot of activity in this area in the world. And our last visit. Uh, so we were able to get into Ukraine, which was very, you know, just we, we are thank, thankful to God whenever that is able to happen. And so this last visit started us off in Kiev. We went, uh, we, dro we drove, which is where the retreat happened. Uh, then we drove over to Kharkiv and then uh, to a small uh, area called Izum, which is right up there next to the border. But, you know, that wasn't enough. Uh, they took us all the way into the eastern part of the Donbass region there. And uh, we were... Uh, just in awe uh, by uh, what God is doing uh, in that part of, of Ukraine, really through uh, the, uh, that is fueled, their efforts on that eastern side are fueled by the seminary. Uh, and of course, we are providing so much to the seminary every month. Uh, I want to show you a couple of pictures that will tell the story, I think, pretty well. Uh, Yvonne and the seminary are doing holistic mission. Uh, Annette and Pablo talked about holistic mission. Of course, this is nothing new for the Outreach Foundation. Uh, what they, they, you know, how, one of the questions that I was very intrigued by was how could we mention mission yet ignore war? Uh, and, and I thought that was a very interesting question that Yvonne Rusin posed. And another thing that I have heard from Yvonne and his team time and time again is we are a church that shares the same scars as our people. We show a Jesus who, care, who cares up close because of you, we can do this. And that is for us. Uh, the fuel that we provide to them is allowing them to do the, some of the things that I'm going to talk about here. You see the clothing distribution. Jeremy, if you go back to that last slide there, you saw the clothing distribution there. Um, there are these are people who live in that part of Izum, uh, and uh, it's bombed out. They're just the most of the houses there don't really are not uh, livable. Uh, those that are most of them, it's kind of like a hurricane where you have the tarps on the roofs uh, and, and they need clothing. And so, you know, many people have provided clothing uh, and here's just some of the folks there. Um, on the right hand side is a very touching uh, picture. Uh, this is one of the main, uh, this is the relief coordinator through the seminary actually. He's a former student uh, and he was actually moving on to be a professional soccer athlete uh, before he attended uh, seminary training. Uh, and he really felt a call uh, to stay in Ukraine during the war. And uh, he goes around and he facilitates the seminary's reach to, I mean, so many churches. Uh, 
they're, they're close to 100 churches that this one seminary is really helping uh, to keep there. And, and this is one of the girls that we met uh, the, at this region. Again, there's just it's just completely destroyed. Uh, but there are elderly people. There are children who really just can't get out uh, because of family. And, and so they are staying. And this is one of those girls. And they just have a very deep and warm relationship. He travels there once a month. You see the, the little Red Cross sign there. What's interesting about this church, and go ahead, Jeremy, we can go to the next slide. What's interesting about all of this is that the church is present where right now the Red Cross is not there, Samaritan's Purse is not there, they're not allowed to be there. The church, however, is. It's in this very hard to reach area where it's very dangerous, and it was such an honor to be there. So you can see us being part of uh, delivering the goods. So uh, the funds that, that uh, we receive translate every month into actual uh, supplies. Uh, that the seminary then gives directly to the people. Uh, and they do it through these convoys uh, that go out every single week. Uh, the, the slides to the left, I'm just fascinated by. As if it wasn't enough to take care of people during a war with their humanitarian needs, this, what the church does and the seminary supports this are alpha courses. So the alpha courses are basic courses that just introduce people who don't know Jesus. They introduce them to Jesus and they introduce them to the Bible. And, and so you think about what's going on here. This church is, is in a very dangerous, hostile zone, um, surrounded by minefields. There are minefields everywhere close to this. Next to this church, there were two Russian art, abandoned artillery posts. It's that close to the front. And what they are doing is that they had a class of 25 people, these are pictured some of them, who are learning about Jesus for the first time. And what, what this is signaling is it's not enough just to provide humanitarian relief. We have to do this in the name specifically of the Lord who is with them. And they want to learn about this, Lord. They, they are seeing that the church is relevant. The, it's, it's that the evangelical church has decided to show up and provide so much. And so it's, it's really leading people to Christ. So the work that is being done is being done fueled by our donations in a significant way. And it's having an impact. It, it's really just, it's holistic. So thank, I wanted to show you that slide and tell that story. It's phenomenal. Let's go to the next slide, Jeremy. Uh, the other thing is that the seminary is serving soldiers. So up till date, we have provided 1,800 immediate first aid kits to the soldiers. You can see a picture of them, how they wear them as they just suit up. They fit, there's, there's a standard kind of, uh, 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 it, there's a standard fit uh, that these soldiers wear, and these kits fit that. Uh, so they're able to take them. They, they, the guy on the right is holding a gator. Uh, we brought a thousand gators this time because soldiers need them to wipe off their face, keep cool, keep warm, um, or you know when there's there's uh, during the winter times, uh, it's it's they're very useful. Uh, these are deployed, though, through the chaplains. Both the IFACs and the Gators are uh, deployed through a chaplains, you know, that we provided training to, but Alexi is one of those. And again, what that does is it just raises to the front the role of the church, the role of the evangelical church, and the name of Christ is being made known among soldiers. And we have stories now that are coming back of soldiers who have, have had to use these kits and have received the care from the chaplains and are becoming Christians because of this. So this is just incredible work. Uh, just We want to mention that we have a partnership with Delta, so they take all of these kits uh, for free. Uh, we, we, when we go over there, we're loaded down with all of these kits, these duffel bags, and Delta has generously agreed just to waive those charges, which means we can bring more IFACs. Uh, chaplains really are mission multipliers, uh, and that was new information for them, that they help the soldiers do their duty. 
Uh, and that, of course, elevates the role of the chaplain in the eyes of the commanders. Uh, so this is all just being done really well. What chaplains need are training and uh, PTSD and trauma, specifically war. How do we get our, our soldiers to get up and do their job? Um, every single day. And so what we're doing is uh, we are working with the seminary to provide that kind of training. And really, it's, it's very useful. People who are of most use are the professional counselors, uh, people who have experience in trauma and PTSD, uh, specifically in a war environment or among military or among uh, police officers. Uh, these are the types of Pope people we want to bring on these visits, and we're excited about it. Another thing we're doing through the seminary is developed a program to help the chaplains stay on the ground. Uh, they use their own vehicles, and so some of these vehicles really need some work, and so we're working with the seminary on that. Uh, go ahead, Jeremy, our next one. Uh, the next side is Persian diaspora. So we're going to transition just really quick. When we speak of Iran, I really like this slide. When we speak of Iran, we usually speak of one country, and that's the red country there. But really what we're talking about, Lazan really just pointed, painted this picture so very well. Uh, and it's true for the Persian diaspora. We really are thinking global. So when you speak, think of Iran, this is what Iran is. It touches almost the entire world. Every single country there that has a color to it is is has got Iranians in it. And so and it, it's an effective strategy, actually. To, and Iran is the fastest growing church in the world right now, which really shocks people when they hear that for the first time. But it's being done through the Persian diaspora, the, the scattered, the scattered people. And they are doing it themselves. They don't, they, you know, we're not the ones who are spreading the gospel among the people. They are the these Muslim background believers from Iran are just very bold and courageous, and they're doing the most creative type of work. So go ahead, Jeremy. Let's go switch it. Um, I think one of the things that I just came back from is Rod Mart. I am so excited about this group. This is a guy named Reza. Um, we can't show too many of the pictures here um, that we, we have. We have to show because of security concerns. Anything we are showing has been approved by Reza. Reza Furutan is a graduate of a partner of ours, uh, PARS. Uh, and his vision for ministry is unlike anything else you will see in the entire Persian diaspora. He works with men, and in particular, men who have a lot of addictions, who are struggling with addiction. And some of them are recovery, some of them are just beginning their journey. They all have come to know Christ uh, through Reza and his team that are living in Iran. So what happens is, is uh, throughout the year, he, he coaches them, he works with them. These are men in Iran. And then twice a year, they come out for conferences. Uh, and this is one of them. They come to Turkey because it's so easy for them and it's easy for us. So we are facilitating their conference. And the conference we uh, uh, facilitated this last time was on shame and vulnerability. This is the group here. Uh, and I was pleased to take four guys from a church in Florida. Um, you can see there's some a few young guys in this picture. And so uh, the Iranian diaspora has a lot of young people in it. Uh, and so it's very well suited for our younger population. Uh, the guy next to me in the blue is one of the, is the men's pastor. And so if churches have a vital men's ministry, this thing really sings beautifully among men who really have a heart for other men. Uh, they have found that uh, so many ministries are working among uh, women and children, but they were leaving the men out. And that was creating more problems than it was solving back in Iran. And so Reza says, let's meet the needs of the men. And as a result, these families are actually finally being transformed in the name of Christ. Let's go to the next slide. This is a ministry of, uh, from Furuzan, uh, uh, who is uh, called Mother uh, by many in the diaspora. Uh, she's a phenomenal woman. This, this is the group we're going to be visiting in November. They are such a delight. These women, by and large, it's women, uh, but there are a few men in it. She has a network of about 300 house churches, and, and uh, these are just some of them. I call this the Mary Magdalene folks. These, the people that you see are each former prostitutes, drug users. Uh, they were on the streets. 
unhoused, and they are all now Muslim background believers who are leading house churches in Iran. They have a fantastic reach into the next generation, working among uh, children. Uh, and, and she has invited the Outreach Foundation to be, not just be part of her next conference, but really to help lead it. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're gonna be leading a three-day conference again in Turkey, because her, her, her house church leaders come to Turkey for, uh, for that, and we'll be worshiping with them, praying with them, uh, doing Bible study, and, and really enjoying. Some of our upcoming trips, just when I emphasized our China trip, uh, still has some openings if you'd like to join in. It's not too late. It's October 11 through 21. Uh, and we'll be participating. Uh, those of you who've been to China, we're participating in the National Table Tennis Tournament hosted by uh, an amazing partner uh, there, the Amity Foundation. It's, it's just going to be so much fun. And then uh, our Turkey visit, I showed you the slide, told you a little bit about Furuzan and her ministry. We're going to do an, uh, a conference there and seven churches visit as well on November 3rd through 15th. We still have just a very few openings uh, for that visit. So if you're interested to look into that, please do. And our 2025, I just thought I'd show some tentative ones. We in Pakistan in March, Ukraine in April, uh, Poland in May with Novus Foundation leading a clergy couples retreat, uh, which is just a real gift. So clergy who feel passionate about that come on that. Lithuania in June, Armenia with Radnard probably in July, uh, China again, and Turkey in November. So that's all for me, and thanks for uh, listening. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, um, just some amazing stuff that's going on uh, with our partners, and uh, we're just thankful to be a part of it. Uh, we could only hit a, a few of them today, and we plan to hit even more next time when we're able to. Um, we didn't want to keep any longer than an hour, so I'm going to kick it back over to Mark. If you'll get yourself unmuted, he's going to say a quick word and close us down with a prayer. And uh, again, we just want to thank you guys for hearing from Novus and the wonderful folks there um, and from some of our staff. Let's unmute you, Mark. Again, uh, you can see God is at work in the world. And uh, Tom's presentation showed you just the areas that uh, that that he's responsible for at the Outreach Foundation is doing a wonderful job. Um, there's a whole list of other plans and uh, opportunities for you to get engaged in in the world. Again, we're so grateful for, for that work. We're uh, going to honor your time. Uh, and uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna close with prayer, and then uh, be looking for these things in the future because we're gonna try to update you uh, as uh, this ministry unfolds. And of course, you can talk to us anytime. You can email us, uh, talk to us about speaking in your churches or getting on trips or whatever have you. That's what we do and what we're called to do. So let me close this with prayer. Loving God, thank you for the gift of the day, for the opportunity that you give us to be a part of the global work of Christ. Pray that you might now take us and sift through these comments and these conversations and where we feel your nudge from your spirit to actively engage in your work. We pray that we might be active listeners. Again, thank you for all the people on the call and all the people that have taken time out of their busy day to see what you're doing in the world. May you, God, may you God bless and keep them in the days ahead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. If we'll have this up on YouTube for those who missed, so be sure to point folks over to the uh, Outreach Foundation YouTube page, and they'll be able to see it after the fact. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.